This is your girl, Ms. Entertainment. I am your host for Let's Talk About It. So welcome to my world. We're getting ready to start in five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Thanks to everyone for sending in your questions. Now here are the answers. Hey, Kurt. This is Josh. Uh, wanted to give you a shout out. Uh, and thanks for submitting the questions uh, from the uh, from the symposium that we held with uh, Ms. Entertainment uh, on the Black Allies uh, Q&A session. Uh, so uh, I think you put out four questions for me. I'm going to do my best to address them. Um, so let's see. Uh, first one was, what has been some of the most disturbing social challenges you've encountered being in an interracial marriage? Uh, I was mentioned... I guess your sister was in an interracial marriage uh, and they were harassed by two black guys on the street and then uh, your brother-in-law you know had to I guess uh, pull out some some extra and uh, defend himself uh, luckily I haven't had to um, had to uh, result to something like that yet I mean I think uh, you know from time to time we get it from both sides my wife will sometimes get some stares and looks from uh, from other sisters, some other black females. Uh, sometimes we'll both get, you know, the dirty looks from uh, uh, actually both sides. But, but I'll tell you this: it 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 hasn't uh, happened as 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 much um, as one would think. Uh, now I don't know if that's because you know we we come across as as uh, you know relatively striking uh, couple. Uh, or maybe the fact that I kind of look like Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'm not really sure. Um, but thankfully and luckily, um, we haven't had anything like that happen. Uh, but I do remember a time I took my wife up north, I actually took her to Vermont for a, uh, uh, our one-year wedding anniversary, and we were in an airport uh, in Albany, New York, and went to go rent a car. And so my wife went to a rental car counter, uh, counter to, to speak to the lady and uh, she was just really uh, short and nasty. Um, and, and I definitely could tell that she was uh, really making it an obvious attempt not to be polite to my wife. And uh, when I showed up to the counter, uh, she seemed to straighten her ass out a little bit. And, uh, you know, I called her on it and, and basically said, you know, why are you, why are you giving my wife such a hard time? Um, anyway, uh, People who are like that typically are pretty, uh, pretty much cowards, at least in my book. Um, so, uh, again, disturbing social challenges. Um, you know, we've had a few, uh, like I said, but luckily nothing has gotten to the point where it's been, uh, you know, requiring uh, physical altercations or force. Uh, I'm not against that though. I'm, I'm ready to go, man. If somebody wants to wants to step, so you can look all you want, but. Uh, that's about the only thing that thinks that kind of comes top of mind. Uh, so your second question, how did my Italian friend respond to my challenging him about the insensitive comment, reminding him how Italian immigrants were treated poorly upon their arrival on American soil? Uh, he got a big case of shut up uh, is basically what ended up happening. Uh, you know, I could tell the look on his face when I brought that up. And I also brought up a, a, another mutual friend of ours uh, who was, uh, he was actually of Irish and Polish descent. And, uh, you know, I said, look, you know, you, you, you're just feeling a little, little more superior right now because you weren't around when that happened. You don't remember what, you, uh, you know, probably your grandparents or your great grandparents went through. Um, but trust me, it, it wasn't good. Uh, you know, they, uh, they experienced a lot of discrimination and, and prejudice. And I told them, I said, you know, next time you need to give a little bit more thought uh, to open in your mouth. And, uh, you know, I asked him if, if he wanted me to help him pick up his face after that. Um, sometimes you just, you, you know, you got to call people out on their stupidity. Um, and, and sometimes, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a situation where, you know, sometimes people open their mouth before they, before they think. I've never done that. I'm always thinking before I open my mouth. Anyway, uh, so great question. Uh, he backtracked it basically, and and uh, he got humbled by that. Uh, but again, I think as 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 uh, you know, as people, we we need to call folks out on their stupidity. And and uh, you know, once you're friends, you might you might uh, approach that a little bit differently. 
Um, or you may just come and hit them right between the eyes with it, which is what I did. Uh, so let's see, your third question. What do you tell your children in response to dealing with racist, ignorant people? So that's a tough one. Um, you know, we're all human beings. We have feelings, right? It's, uh, it's enough when somebody makes fun of maybe the clothes you're wearing because maybe it's not brand name or it's not the best clothes or maybe, uh, you know, your haircut's a little funky or, or something like that. And, and you know, we, we hear these things, right? And, and uh, we all have feelings and nobody likes to get their feelings hurt. And, you know, it's a hell of a thing um, that uh, for some reason people think it's quite okay to, to somehow belittle or marginalize uh, others because of, uh, you know, the genetics that they inherited, you know, when they came into this world. So some of the things I kind of tell them is, you know, first of all, stay calm, right? You keep your peace. Um, and sometimes it's hard, uh, but you also have to remember you're dealing with somebody that, you know, may have never had a positive experience with somebody who didn't look like them, uh, or maybe have heard a lot of stories told to them as kids or growing up from, you know, friends or relatives, which, you know, I think oftentimes that's where, uh, you know, uh, racism continues to persist is because you have, uh, uh, people who are in positions of authority, especially when you're little, you know, you look at mom and dad and, and they're kind of your source of truth for everything because you don't know anything as a kid. Uh, so I, I try to remind him that, you know, not everybody was brought up like you. Not everybody, uh, unfortunately, uh, believes that, uh, you know, we were all made in God's image. We happen to believe that. And uh, so I tell him, you know, I hate to, I hate to put the onus on you, with this, but I need you to continue to be salt and light, and I need you uh, to give a positive example. Um, you know, if if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna have words with somebody, that's fine. You can have words. Um, don't ever get physical unless they decide they they, they want to make a big mistake and, and 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 escalate that situation. Then you give them, you know, you give them what they came for, and you let them know that 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 ain't gonna fly. Um, but again, I just I just try to tell them, you know, keep your calm. Remember where you come from. You're a child of God, and uh, and some people, God bless them, are just they're damaged, um, and they've been uh, they've been indoctrinated and brainwashed by others that really should have told them the truth, uh, but for whatever reason they didn't. Um, so just continue to be a positive example, uh, and give somebody a different experience, right? Uh, without giving away your dignity. Don't ever give your dignity to an ignorant racist, ever. Um, so hopefully that helps answer that question for you. And then the fourth one, what is your perspective on the influence that the local, national, and world news media outlets have on race relations playing a vital role in shaping the perceptions of society at large? That is, uh, that is a multifaceted question. Um, definitely a believer in freedom of speech, definitely a believer in freedom of the press. I think the media is, 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 uh, is one of those things that's kind of a necessary evil in a way. Uh, I just, uh, gosh, I would really hope uh, that people take that responsibility a little bit more seriously when you have that kind of platform, when you have that ability to uh, spread certain messages or perceptions, right, to, to the masses. Um, because if anyone has done any type of, uh, you know, studying in, in psychology, right, mass psychology is a very powerful thing. You know, if people don't think that's true, uh, you know, go to, a, go to a, well, not right now, but think about when you go, as we go to a sporting event, right, or any, any large event. And I picked a sporting event because, you know, you could look amongst the crowd and, you know, like if you're a Falcons fan or Atlanta United fan, you can see everybody wearing the same colors and everybody, everybody who's anybody, anybody's in that crowd. Um, and, uh, you know, when the team scores, when the announcer gets everybody fired up, right, there is power in mass communication. You really do have the ability to kind of craft a perception of the people. Um, you know, how... How is, you know, how does that get fixed? I, again, I just, I, I, I think we, we do have some media outlets that are, are, are more bent on trying to indoctrinate people, right, to convince them of something uh, because there's a different agenda that they want certain people to follow. Um, but I think they have a tremendous amount of influence. Um, and uh, because of that, 
I'd really like to see them be uh, a lot more responsible uh, with their programming. Sometimes they get it right and, and they get it really right. Other times, uh, I think they miss an opportunity uh, to, to, to present something to, to the, the public as a whole in, in, in a positive way. Uh, and I guess what I mean by that is not necessarily sugarcoating something, but you know, you have an opportunity to spread message. You have an opportunity to get into the psyche, particularly in this country, of a lot of a lot of people. Um, so that is, uh, again, I just I would very much like to see them take a lot more responsibility for that, um, and understand that you know words are important and how you convey your message. Right, that impacts people, that impacts their outlook on their life, that that uh, it also impacts um, you know how they perceive reality. So. Uh, I think if uh, our journalists and our press and our media outlets, I don't know, maybe got a little more sincere about uh, their mission, uh, we could we could probably uh, you know get this country to shift to a uh, to a better mindset. So, um, and that's a hard thing. That's a hard uh, hard uh, problem to solve for because you got so many different media outlets and. You've got people that come on and have a lot of opinionated pieces that they try to present as facts, and then you have to figure out, is this information or is this infotainment? Uh, again, I think it goes back to our media executives and, um, and the, uh, the people that work for them to, to, again, to really take a hard look at themselves and uh, consider how their, uh, their programming is uh, and the programming that they push to us. So... Uh, Hopefully that helps, Kurt. I really appreciate the uh, the questions. Uh, hopefully it just gave you a little bit uh, more insight to kind of how this guy thinks. Um, and uh, again, appreciate you reaching out. Take care, stay healthy, and stay safe.